Accurate air-fuel ratio measurements are crucial while using your Dynajet chassis dyno, and the AFR2 dual air-fuel ratio module makes getting them easy. It communicates with the DynoRT main box using the supplied CAN cable, and it can take samples from two different wideband sensors, either from a bung or using a sampling tube. When sampling AFR data using a bung, make sure the wideband sensor isn't too close to a dump pipe or tailpipe where it can catch air reversion or on a turbocharged application too close to the exhaust housing. The sampling tube allows you to take readings without using an exhaust bung, and we recommend your total length of tubing and copper sample tube is no longer than six feet. The module comes with a single wideband oxygen sensor, and if you aren't using a second one, you'll need to plug both sensor and sampling ports for the second channel. Using the supplied airflow meter, you'll need to adjust the flow to 35 liters per minute on your air fuel pump sampling tubes. To do this, you'll need to turn on your air fuel pump in your WIMPEP-8 dyno control software. You can do this by going under wideband sensors, turning on the air pump. From here, you'll need to adjust the vacuum generator. Loosen the lock nuts, adjust the vacuum generator, then tighten the lock nut. The air fuel ratio module has a built-in vacuum pump that uses compressed air to draw gas through the sampling tube and pass the oxygen sensors. You'll need to supply the module with clean, dry, compressed air regulated to 100 PSI. Once your sensors are installed, you're going to have to turn on your DynaWare RT's AFR2 pump. Make sure that if you have to disconnect the sensor, you always turn the unit off before removing any cables. From the wideband O2 ribbon, use the heater one and two buttons to activate the appropriate oxygen sensors. Allow them to preheat before making a run. When the sensors are warmed up, the sensor heater lights on the module will light up solid. When you're ready to start taking an AFR sample, you'll need to turn on your AFR pump under the wideband O2 ribbon. You can also set up custom configurations under the AFR configuration tab to turn the pump on or off by itself. You can select or change the fuel type in the wideband AFR configuration screen. There are several preset fuel types, but you can also add your own by clicking the box with the dots to the right of the drop-down menu. To do this, click New. Name your fuel type and specify the stoic value. You'll also need to specify the min and max AFR by calculating it from your stoic value. The min value will be your stoic value times 0.68 and your max will be stoic times 1.22, which are the limits the sensor will read in Lambda. Clicking the double arrow box will add your new fuel type to the list. We recommend cleaning your AFR pump every four to six months, depending on usage. If you're having trouble adjusting its flow, it's time to clean. You do this by using off-the-shelf carburetor cleaner and cleaning the AFR bung ports, as well as the vacuum generator. We also offer sample test gas to verify the calibration of your oxygen sensors. Sensors need to be checked when they are brand new and watched for variances as they age. Once they skew 0.3 points of AFR, they need to be replaced. Finally, here's a couple of tips to help you get the most out of your air fuel ratio module. Leaded race fuel will drastically shorten the life of the oxygen sensors, and two-stroke engines will also lead to shorter sensor life. If you tune these kinds of vehicles, have replacement sensors on hand. Always let the vehicle warm up to remove condensation from the exhaust. Excessive moisture can damage the O2 sensors. For dyno tech and sales support, call us toll free at 1-800-992-3525 or visit us online at dynojet.com.